Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at connecting to a Raspberry Pi Zero device. So if you've just picked up one of these devices, you'll notice that it doesn't come with Wi-Fi, doesn't come with Ethernet, doesn't really come with, with a convenient way to connect and manage your Linux distribution that you've installed to it. Uh, so we're going to take a look at actually connecting to it over USB uh, through some simple methods that hopefully uh, everyone can take advantage of. Uh, so on this device, you'll notice that it does have two micro USB ports as well as a mini HDMI port. These micro USB ports, one of them is a power in and one of them is a USB. So power in does not do any kind of data, whereas USB can do data and power. We're going to be focusing on the USB part of this. To be successful, there will be a few things that you'll need beforehand. Uh, so the first thing that you'll need is a USB cable. Now it's very important that you're using a USB data end charge cable. So if you go to Amazon and you're looking for cables and you'll notice that some of them are very cheap, less than a dollar, chances are you don't want those cables because more than likely those cables are only charge cables. You'll also need a micro SD card. Uh, so I'm using a micro SD card that is eight gigabytes in size. You just need something that's four gigabytes or higher. Maybe even two gigabytes will work. Um, and then a way to connect this to your computer so that way you can install the latest Linux operating system to it. I am using a uh, micro SD card reader. Uh, I bought it from Amazon. It was like five bucks. Uh, it will be listed in the uh, description of this video in case you wanted to pick it up yourself. It's pretty convenient when working with Raspberry Pi. Uh, but what you'll actually do is you'll plug it in and then you can just plug it into your computer uh, and then you have the permission to write to the SD card, install Linux on it, do a whole lot of great stuff. Going forward, I will be doing picture in picture so that way you can see exactly what's going on my computer screen as well as what's going on from a physical hardware perspective so that way you don't miss any steps when it comes to analyzing the Raspberry Pi Zero, what's on my screen, what's going on with the SD cards, things like that. So I am on the Raspberry Pi website uh, and I am in the download section uh, where I'm looking at two different flavors of Raspbian which is going to be the Linux that we're going to install on our Pi Zero. Uh, so the, between the two different flavors, there's Pixel and then there's Light. Pixel has a UI interface, so common if you're going to be using it with a television or a monitor or something else. Uh, whereas Light, you just get a terminal and it's more server oriented. I'm going to be using Jesse Light uh, with our Raspberry Pi setup or our Pi Zero setup. Um, and as of right now, the latest version is from November 25th, 2016. Although it doesn't really matter. You just have to read the blog and see what what minor changes have been included uh, throughout the releases. So I've already gone ahead and I've downloaded it and it is on my desktop and it is a zip archive. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to extract that zip archive and with it extracted we should come up with an image file, so an IMG file. So we no longer need the zip archive at this point in time. So now what we want to do is we want to prepare our SD card that I have plugged into my USB hub. And if you're on a Mac like me, you'll be using a tool called Disk Utility. There are a hundred other different ways to format this SD card. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. Windows has their own versions. Linux has their own way to do it. Disk Utility is the most convenient if you're using a Mac. So I'm going to open up Disk Utility. Uh, it does have my, um, my micro SD card. Uh, it is already occupied with data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to erase it. Although technically you don't even need to erase it. I'm going to just uh, erase it as fat. Because yeah, if you're using a Mac, the setup, uh, the, the clone process will actually erase it for us. All right, so it failed for whatever reason. Uh, let's, let me try to erase it again. Just erase the partition this time. Well, All right, so succeeded this time. Doesn't really matter the name. Uh, what will matter to us is uh, what we need to do is we need to unmount it. It cannot be mounted when we do this process on Mac. So it's unmounted. I go to my terminal now, and what we want to do is we want to really look at all of our disk options. So we're going to say disk util, and what we're going to say is list. 
So when we listed uh, the possible mounted drives, take note at what drives you, you have mounted because it's very easy to make a mistake and erase the wrong drive. I know that the card that I stuck in is eight gigabytes, so it's not my two terabyte hard drive or my internal storage. Uh, so what we're looking at is the dev disk four. So that represents the micro SD card that we stuck in. So the next step here is we want to really clone that image file to this micro SD file. So what we can do is we can do the following and it's gonna require sudo uh, if you're on a Mac or Linux. Uh, but what we, what we can do is we can say sudo dd, we're gonna say bs equals one m. We're gonna say input, so if, so input file, and that's going to be 2000, it's gonna be on the desktop. So we'll type in the full, the full path. It's going to be 2016, so it's just that image file. And then what we want to do is we want to provide the output where it's going to be output to. So it's OF, and that's going to be dev. And then instead of disk4, we're going to say R disk4. So it's going to be a much faster clone in that sense. Or you could just use disk4, it's up to you. And we're going to hit enter. It's going to ask you for your password. And it may take a variable amount of time for this clone process to, to complete, depending on the size of your card. So it is complete if I go back into my disk utility, it still says boot because I did have a Raspberry Pi installed previously, but this time it is fresh. So we can close out of disk utility. Uh, we can actually just clear our terminal as well. And what we have is uh, we have probably a mounted uh, boot drive. So things need to be adjusted a little bit because like mentioned previously, you need to be able to SSH over USB. It doesn't have any kind of internet capabilities as of right now on the Pi Zero. Uh, so we, we need to make some adjustments. There's a certain file we need to open on side of the boot drive. We need to open up two files actually. We need to open up config. Uh, so let's see where it is. Config.txt and cmdline.txt. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with config.txt. So I'm going to just open it with whatever editor I have lying around. And what we want to do is we want to add a line to the very bottom of the file. So we're going to add the following. We're going to say dt overlay equals dwc2. So the next item that we want to open is the cmd line text. So this is actually very important here. This is a one line file. We don't want to use multiple lines. We don't want to use any kind of delimiter characters. We don't want to use any kind of special characters. It's very important, the format that we have here. Uh, so what we want to add is we want to add the following. We want to say modules, and this could be uh, in the middle here after root weight. So what we're saying is uh, modules load DWC, oops, I forgot an equal sign, equals DWC two comma g underscore e t h e r ether uh, so again this is modules load dwc2 comma g underscore ether and there's no commas after it there's no comma before it it's just delimited by the space character so what we're going to do is we're going to say save finally the next thing we want to do is we want to add a file here so when, because in the later releases uh, the Raspberry team decided to disable SSH by default. So we need to create a file at the root of this drive and we want to call it SSH. And that file doesn't need to have anything in it. It just needs to exist. And we're going to exit. So now what we can do is we can eject this boot drive and we can stick it into our Raspberry Pi. Trying to eject. Um, let's go ahead and, and risk it and say force eject. Let's go ahead and eject it from our USB port. We're going to take out the card and we're going to stick it into our Raspberry Pi. Like I mentioned previously, we will be using the data USB port on the Raspberry Pi Zero, not the charge USB cable or port. Uh, because we will be SSHing over the USB 
and the power port does not do any kind of data whatsoever. Uh, so just, just keep in mind what, what port you're plugging into. So get that plugged into your computer in some fashion. In this case, I'm using a USB hub. Doesn't really matter. But as soon as you plug in, if your SD card is formatted correctly, the power light will turn on. If the power light does not turn on, your USB card is not formatted correctly. Uh, just give it a little bit of time. It'll blink for a while. It'll, it'll do its thing. Um, it needs to start up just like any computer. And of course, the Raspberry Pi Zero is not very fast. So it could take a little bit of time before we're able to SSH into it. Uh, generally, the first boot, maybe you'll want to wait a minute, maybe two minutes um, before you're sure that it's good to go. But play by ear. You can always play around with it and see what happens. I'm just going to leave that plugged in for now. So going back to our terminal, now that our Raspberry Pi is set up and plugged in, we want to try to connect to it. And we're going to connect to it through SSH because that's what we've configured through the command line file and the config file. Uh, so what we can do is we can say SSH Pi, which is the username uh, set up by Raspbian. And then we can say Raspberry Pi dot local and hit enter. The default password that Raspbian gives us as of right now is, should be Raspberry, so R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And at this point, we've just connected to our Raspberry Pi Zero through USB. So this is not through the Wi-Fi, this is not through Ethernet, this is Ethernet over USB. And we can verify that, we can check out the memory that the Raspberry Pi Zero has, which is about 512 megabytes. Uh, we can see our disk space which the card I put in was 8 gigabytes, so roughly 7.2 gigabytes of storage space. Um, and we can actually exit out and try to do it again. Um, and the reason why we're doing dot .local is, well, we don't have an IP for this Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, I'm sure you could figure one out, uh, but by using Bonjour, we can just specify local and it'll pick it up because the Linux distribution has uh, Bonjour on the receiving end, so it's allowed to connect to it. And where we get Raspberry Pi dot local is if you connect to it again, uh, we'll, we'll enter our password again. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll type in host name. So the host name is what we're using to connect to. So we're saying the host name is Raspberry Pi, and then we add local at the end. So if we wanted to change our host name, we could. We could uh, name it such and such, and then we would just type in, uh, we would SSH through such and such dot raspberry uh, dot local. Uh, so it wasn't particularly difficult to get connected to our Raspberry Pi Zero. I know that's a little little scary at first because you're working with this small IoT device. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, doesn't have Ethernet. It's uh, You may not have soldering skills to solder a Wi-Fi chip to it um, or anything like that. Uh, but it's not to be concerned about. Just have a data and charge cable uh, and then configure the distribution to allow you to SSH over USB. And that's really all there is to it.